Hi, I'm going to tell you today about an Instant Atlas dynamic report function that you might not know about. This function is used through the metadata workbook and it will help you to create a minimum and maximum chart value. Now you might need this because you may find that the data that you have across years varies so much that in your bar charts um, your y-axis will start to move around and this is clearly not ideal. So to demonstrate to you what I mean, in this report I have highlighted a parish in Louisiana. This is our single map demonstration report that you can find on our website. This is Jefferson Parish and when I've highlighted this you can see that in the time series chart we have at least five years worth of data and this data is the census data for the population per square mile. It's currently showing us the value for 2000 and for Jefferson that's 698.14. So you can see that that's where this is sitting in the bar chart. If you notice in the bar chart we have a y-axis that goes from 0 to 2800. If I click play on our time series animation to make the map change colors through time, you will see automatically that the bar chart y-axis is moving around in terms of its data. So to stop this from happening, you need to go into your IA workbook, and you can see here at the bottom that I'm in the metadata worksheet, and we need to start adding in some details here to make Instant Atlas create a minimum and maximum chart value. This is not done automatically by the software. This is something that you have to put in to control the software. So the type of element that we need to put into column A is an indicator. You can also do this on theme level if you want to do it on theme level. I'm going to show you how to do it on indicator level. The element, which is in column B, has to match the indicator name precisely. So the way to do this so that you can ensure that you actually absolutely got the right name in that box is to simply copy and paste. The metadata element, this is where you tell Instant Atlas what it is exactly that you want to do. I'm going to set the minimum chart value first. So the command is min chart value. And the minimum chart value that I want is simply zero. So the next line needs to be pretty much exactly the same, except this time we need to set the maximum chart value. So again, I'm going to simply copy and paste the name of my indicator. And I'm going to add the max chart value. This value I'm going to put at 3,600. Now, with any changes that you make to the software, especially in the workbook, nothing is going to actually update until you export to data.xml and save that file into the report folder location. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to click the IA export button on my data manager. It's going to save a data.xml into this report folder. Because this data already exists, it's going to warn me that the data is going to be overwritten. And I'm, I want it to do that, so I'm going to click yes. And this is it. The data manager is going through and cycling through the data. And at the end of its cycling, it will pick up the metadata that I have affected. So let's go back to our report and refresh the browser. If I click play now, we should see that this axis does not change. Okay? 
So there's one other style, though, that we might want to have to change in this report. In a similar way, we can see that the legend is affected. So let's just click play again, and this time, keep your eyes on this legend. You can see that the breaks are changing through time. That's because the legend is picking up on the breaks through time that have been set in the workbook. And Synatlas is actually creating those breaks for you automatically. A lot of people are very happy with this setting and they don't change it. However, some people want to ensure that, like the bar chart, um, the axis on the bar chart, that you can also have your breaks be manually controlled. To do this, you need to go back into your metadata worksheet. This time, you're going to need to use a number of different functions, so I'm going to take you through them now. I'm going to affect this on an indicator level. You can also do this on a theme level if you like. I'm going to use the same indicator as before. This is my population per square mile. This time I'm going to change the metadata element to custom breaks. Custom breaks need to be set to one more number than you want the number of breaks. So in other words, if you want five breaks or five ranges of data, you need to have at least six numbers. That's because you must set the beginning of the break and the end of the break. So I'm just going to put in what I will use for this particular legend. So we're going to start at zero and then I'm going to put in 100, 500, 2000, three thousand six hundred and five thousand obviously these breaks can be anything that you want so you can see here I've got six numbers there's no spaces between these numbers they're simply simply semicolons now I need the legend to reflect what these breaks look like so I'm going to add in this control through the metadata workbook needs to say custom label. So the labels I'm going to choose are 0 to 100, 101 to 500, 501 to 2000, 2001 to 33,600, and we need to set the final break. 3601 to 5000. So I'm going to export, save this file. and refresh the browser. And you see now that I have this custom legend. If I press play, you notice that the custom legend does not move through time. That's it. For more tips and hints, have a look through our YouTube channel. Thanks very much.